Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, a very important topic. You see, we have the guidance, we have the goodness, we have uh, the word of the Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have the Quran, we have the Sunnah, we have the miracles of the Prophet, peace be upon him. We have the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have so much of guidance. Uh, every word of the Almighty is filled with power. Uh, Allah speaks of the miracles of the Prophet, peace be upon him. We hear about them in the Quran, in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And you know what? Yes, we are moved by it. We are supposed to be moved by it. We are supposed to be reading the Quran. I ask you a question in all honesty. How much of Quran do you read a day? How much do you read a week? If you don't read weekly, how much do you read a month? And I'm sure every one of us can do better. If you do read it, do you read it with its meaning or do you not read it with its meaning? <clears throat> so, I've been seeing a lot of posts of food items as well as little markings on various uh, things, sometimes on human beings, sometimes in nature, where people tend to see things based on their imagination that are not actually there. And sometimes they are fraudulently there, which means they were put. So you have someone pretending like there is a tattoo with the name of Allah written on it. And uh, they're showing it to you on the hand, on the face, on the chest, on, on where, wherever else. And trying to make that evidence to prove that Islam is the truth. Okay, I've seen people come up with a tomato or tomato, according to the American accent, tomato. Okay, tomato. And they show you on that tomato, look, it says Allah on here. I've seen people come with a brinjal, with an egg fruit, you know, and they, 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 they have a sliced one, they're frying it, and suddenly they say, look, it says Allah on here. That, that's supposed to be evidence that Islam is the truth. Then they will show you a chapati or a ruti, as they call it, right? And they, they show you, look, I was actually, uh, you know, making this thing, and look at what it says. It says Allah on it. And you say, where? And they say, look, this is where it says it. Then they show you uh, a cloud, for example. They say, look, 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 you know, this cloud, can you see? And you say, but where? And they show you, see, that's the alif, you know, that's the lamb, that's the other lamb, that's the ha, and so on. And people are saying that that means Allah, okay? And that's supposed to be evidence that Islam is the truth. Have you paused for a moment and seen that other religions have done the same? And if that was proof and evidence that the it, that that supposedly makes the religion correct, then we've lost because others have more. I've seen the Hindus come up with so many uh, different types of signs that they show you the Om is written on and so many other things. I've, I've seen Christians as well tell us regarding the cross and they say there's a cross in absolutely everything. Whatever you look at, there's a cross. And I've seen people, and it's not like the Christians agree with it generally, or the Hindus agree with it, or any other faith agrees with it. But I'm telling you, there are people from among those faiths who actually say, look. So just like that, it's according to me, it's a weakness of faith. Where if the Quran doesn't move you, and the Sunnah doesn't move you, and the word of Allah doesn't move you, and iqtarabati sa'atu wa shaq al-qamar does not move you, the miracles of the Prophet, peace be upon him, don't move you, and you want a ruti to move you, you want a tattoo that was fraudulently put there to move you, people say it was on a, sh it was on a fish, it's on a little boy, it's on a little girl, it was on a newborn, it's on a sheep, it's, it's on a this. Did Allah really subhanahu wa ta'ala say that evidence of this religion being the truth is going to be found? on an egg or for example uh, on a ruti or for example on a uh, on somebody's chest or on somebody's thigh uh, or maybe in, in something else or you know we're going to show you here and there. no let me explain if you do really believe and see that yes you know you and you see that you can make the dhikr of Allah you can remember Allah you can say the remembrance of Allah and it, it might be a sign for you but it's definitely not for humanity at large for you to be able to show this as evidence because if it were it can be negated by people of other faiths who would show you something belonging to their faith that would be far more in frequency than anything that we were to show and why I'm saying this is I've done a little research into uh, people of other faiths, the signs and the symbols that show up in nature and so, and they, th this is what they're saying. But with us as Muslimin, we don't go into all of that, okay? 
And I'm not asking you to go into it. I'm trying to tell you, study the Quran, engage in the remembrance of Allah, fulfill your prayers. This is powerful enough. It's powerful. It's so powerful. You, you know, you'll actually benefit so much from it. It's amazing. But if you were to believe in every little thing that crops up and have superstitious beliefs, you know, we look at signs sometimes, we look at things sometimes, and we start thinking, oh gosh, uh, you know, it reads this. I'll give you a little example. You know, some time back on the Coca-Cola can, people said, no, you're not allowed to drink Coke because it says, La Muhammad, La Makkah. Uh, and I was like, gosh, where does it say that? They say, no, you see, I can read clear cut English. It says Coca-Cola, clear cut with every rule of the English language. It says Coca-Cola, C, you know, C-O-C-A, C-O-L-A, right? Coca-Cola. They say, no, if you turn it around and look at it from a mirror effect and you do this and you do that, you can see it says, La Muhammad, La Muhammad. Now, I want to ask you a question. Were you asked by Allah to turn things around, to look at them upside down, to check them through a mirror and to look at them? And if they happen to say something, then it means it's blasphemous. It means it's this, it's that. Not at all. Not at all. Coke is bad for the health. Done. If you're not going to drink it, don't. I mean, I stopped drinking it from a while because of the sugar content, because it's a carbonated drink that's not so healthy. But once in a while, I still would drink it. You know, uh, sometimes uh, you just need that little sip of cold Coke. Subhanallah. It doesn't make it haram. But I am telling you, yes, it might not be healthy. And perhaps you want to stay away from it, stay away from it. But don't come up with some weird ideas to say, look, if you were to look at it from the other way and turn it and do this recently, and and I'm, and if it's something clear cut where you know that it's not written in any language and I'm looking at it and they've written it only and solely in the Arabic language proper with the rules and regulations of the Arabic language, then indeed we have every right to say, look, these guys are intentionally or maybe unintentionally or for whatever reason they're blaspheming or they're creating trouble. Recently, someone showed me and not just one person, a few, someone showed me the Nike shoe. And they said, you know what, look underneath, it says Allah, very clearly. Now, if you look at it, it says Max Air. In proper English, it says Max Air. And initially, I actually thought, oh, wow, this thing actually says Allah. But they turned it around. So naturally, when you're writing the M, it's going to look like the, the, the other part of Allah, that way around. And if you put an A, for example, the A is going to look like the Ha, that's that way there. So were you asked by Allah to turn things around and check what they look like and so on? They say, no, it's quite clear. Initially, I also thought, what's going on? But then I quickly realized when I spoke to several scholars and they said, listen, this is the English language. This is how it's written. When you're writing in joining handwriting or when you're writing it in a specific way, this is what it says. And the Muslims get so angry. But those are the same Muslims who at times don't read Salah. They don't even read the Quran. They don't engage in the dhikr of Allah. They don't even dress appropriately. They probably drink. They probably do so many things. That group also gets more excited about this little thing which is according to a certain language properly written to say Max Air, for example, and they would make such a noise yet had they just engaged in a small istighfar for the little that they're for the sins they're doing or in their major sins sometimes leaving their obligation unto Allah. And had they engaged in those obligations, it would be far more beneficial for them than to make a noise about these things. So it's just something I decided to say because uh, a friend of mine sent me a, a little image this morning of someone whose uh, you know, chest was tattooed with Allah written on it. And subhanAllah, you know, the world started saying, MashaAllah, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah. And I'm like, gosh, you know, this could be fraudulent. It could not be fraudulent just to make someone famous, etc. It could be or couldn't be. If it is, it's a sign for them, not for the whole world. And if it, if it, if it was fraudulent, then we're all being, you know, SubhanAllah, made a fool of. And this is why I say, if that was the way Allah wanted to prove that a religion is valid, then definitely we've lost. That's not the way Allah said a religion is valid. A religious validity, the validity of a religion is based on its teachings. It's based on um, the authenticity of it. It's based on uh, the scriptures and, and so many other factors. And yes, there will be signs in the horizons. There will be signs to prove the existence of Allah. And there are signs and there will continue to be new signs. But we're not talking of things that are created out of superstition or, you know, to start getting, uh, to start finding things. Like I say, it depends on the strength of your imagination. 
If your imagination is powerful, you're going to look at the clouds and you're going to see people. You'll see your uncle. Someone looks like your mother-in-law. <laughs> Someone else might look like your granny and whoever else in, in the clouds. And a little while later, you see a car. Depends on your imagination. When we were kids, we used to see Father Christmas up there. I don't know if you noticed it, but that doesn't mean anything. You're just a child and you're just looking with your imagination. SubhanAllah, all that fluff looks like cotton wool, looks like the little beards that, that are, are placed on, on the faces of those. So we need to know. Uh, let's be mature about things. Let's follow the faith correctly. Like I said, making a noise about those things. Better than that is just start your five salah. You read the Quran on a daily basis. I think many of us can improve on that. We don't read the Quran on a daily basis. If we do, I think we, we don't even know the meaning of it. So let's learn the meaning of it, inshallah. May Allah bless you guys and grant every one of us goodness. And I pray that what I've said is understood by the people. And I hope that you can actually look at things in perspective and understand what your duty is as a believer. Uh, may Allah bless you guys. And uh, shukran brother Farooq for that message. And uh, I love you all as well. And inshallah, I'm going to uh, post this on YouTube as well for the benefit of all. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.